What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video on TPL locks. Today I would like to review someone who was not only iconic for her long beautiful grey locks but who was also iconic for her legacy. Today we are reviewing Toni Morrison. Chloe Anthony Wolford Morrison, known as Toni Morrison, was an American novelist, essayist, editor, teacher, and professor emeritus at Princeton University. She was born and raised in Ohio and graduated university in 1953. After that, she went to graduate school at Cornell, and in the late 1960s, she became the first black female editor in fiction at Random House in New York City. She became well known as an author in the 70s and 80s, and her most popular book, Beloved, was made until a 1998 film starring Oprah Winfrey. In 1980, she also won the Pulitzer Prize for Beloved, and in 1993, she won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Let's review her locks. All right, so for the lock journey of Toni Morrison, I would love to start with this picture where Toni Morrison has a little afro going on. I believe this was a very popular hairdo back in the 1970s for black people. It's a great hairstyle that continues to come back even today in pop culture. So from 1970, I want to go to 1974. Here we can see her perhaps in her office with again that same afro. So she doesn't have locks here yet. I just want to show these pictures to you so you can see what her curl pattern looks like. Um, I think that she used some type of comb, some type of afro comb maybe to comb out her hair to make it into a very even small afro because I think if she washes her hair, her natural curl pattern will show and this is more the combed out version of her curl pattern. So no locks yet. From 74 we jump to 1978 where we can see her with her family, her two sons. Uh, I believe she had a third son who unfortunately passed away when he was young. Um, and here we can see that she has a different hairdo. This looks to me like a some type of blowout with uh, curlers because you can see some curls in her hair pa pattern. And again, this was a very popular hairstyle. This also ties back into kind of the notion that um, straightening or blow drying your hair was more socially acceptable than just wearing your natural curls, which is something that fortunately today is less and less relevant. Um, but you would see a lot of people probably your ancestors and, and my grandmother and her mother, they all wore their hair straightened or blow dried or with some type of curl pattern that wasn't their natural curl pattern to be more socially acceptable. This was just a few years before she won the Pulitzer Prize for her book, Beloved. Um, and to be honest, when I started researching Toni Morrison, I didn't really know much about her, but after reading into what she's about and what she's done in her life. I'm super impressed by everything she's done and I think I would really love to read some of her books because getting a Nobel Prize for literature is not any prize. So from 85 we jump to 88 when she won the Pulitzer Prize and here we can see her hair again up close. It's a bit shorter than the last picture and if we look at the root hair, we can kind of see that she does have way coarser hair going on at the root and it's a bit more straight up top. And this is, I think, the year before she starts getting locks. Because if we go to the next picture, 1989, we can see that she has something else going on. To me, it looks like she has braided... Um, some other hair into her own hair because in 1988 her hair was not long at all and then in 89 her hair is suddenly down to her jawline so i believe she got some type of weave braided into her own hair and this was the start of locks for her so she started with braids which i actually didn't expect I thought she might have started with two strand twists or even maybe free forming. I'm not really sure what I was expecting, but judging from the later pictures, I didn't expect her to start off like this. So we can kind of see that the hair that it's starting to grow out. And in the next pictures, we will see how that plays out. But her natural curl pattern, which is 
way coarser than we saw in the pictures before is starting to show and she has that kind of salt and pepper color going on which i'm really pleased to see that she didn't dye her locks she just kept her own natural hair color even when she braided fake hair into her own hair so from 89 we go to 92 and in 92 we can start to see her hair budding a little bit because here up close we can see a bit more clear that this braid is braided into her own hair but if we look between the braid and the root we can start seeing some budding especially here it's quite apparent that she's maybe using a twisting method or at least pulling them apart to um, make them bud and make them transition into locks. To be honest, I've never seen anyone do it like this in any of the lock journeys that I've reviewed. I have never seen anyone who tried it this way. So I think this is a new strategy that I can add to these videos when people ask how they should get locks. One way will be to just braid hair into your own hair if you have short hair and then make sure that the root starts to lock up. I think one of the benefits of doing it this way is that you kind of cheat your way out of the messy stage, the baby lock stage, because it's not like that doesn't have to happen in order for you to get locks, but it doesn't really look like she has locks until they grow out way more. And by that time, they will look like locks instead of kind of a, a messy afro. Most people just embrace their baby lock stage, but some people really don't feel comfortable uh, with their hair like that. So this will be a strategy for them to try, I guess. So this is a year later, and this is what I was talking about. She has a bandana on her head, and it's kind of covering her locks. Um, I think her locks here are a year old if i'm not mistaken so her locks really should have matured almost all of them by now um but you can clearly see that her hair is longer the braids that are braided into her own hair are way longer maybe she added hair to it for it to look longer or this is just her natural hair growth over time and that within a year she grew like a good few inches. I'm not really sure because it's not too easy to find dates with all of these pictures. We can already start to see kind of the the signature style that she had before she passed away um, with her locks that she pulls everything back and she even braids it in kind of a fishtail. That's not the case here but we'll see that in some of the next few pictures. So 1993, I believe this was the year she won the Nobel Prize. And here in this color picture, we can see more clearly what her hair is doing. So here we can see the braids and the clear distinction between her own hair, her own locks and the braids that were braided into her hair. And you can start to see how the locks are forming kind of. Here at her edges, we can't really see anything special if we didn't know that she got locks after this. We wouldn't even be able to see it just from looking at her hairline. Some places, some locks are already peeking out. So from 1993 to 1994 is a huge difference because if we look at this picture, this looks absolutely like locks to me. They do look not that dense and not that uh, tight yet, but these absolutely look like locks to me. So perhaps at this point in time, she cut out the hair that was braided into her own hair because her locks were just taking over. And this is the signature look that we see her with. Her locks pulled back, not too tight. You can't see her parts. And I think that she started semi-freeforming because we never really see her parts in any of these pictures but we also don't see her with a fresh retwist. So I think she just kept her hair apart so they didn't grow together. And she was wearing the bandana a lot, which also helps with ke keeping your hair a bit more neat, a bit less frizzy. Or sometimes people's hair type is just that way that it never really does frizz. It never really looks frizzy. Uh, and yeah, she kind of keeps it in the same hairstyle from here on out. So from 1994, we jump into a year later where we can kind of see the side view and I think most of the braids that were in her hair are now gone because her own length has taken over the same length that she had with the braids. Yeah, I like it. It's still kind of, how should I say that? It, it's not very tight 
it's still kind of like poofy and i think it really suits her it really makes for a really distinctive look it looks super formal and professional as well and just the gray locks i mean i'm a sucker for gray locks i love gray locks so from 1995 we jump straight to 2008 here in 2008 you can see what I'm talking about. You never really see parts. So I think she semi free form. She just pulls them apart because her locks don't seem to grow together in big clumps after a while, but they also don't look very uh, like, like they've been retwisted or interlocked or something like that. What we can also see is that the gray shade of her hair is starting to change as well. A bit less from dark gray and a bit more to lighter gray. And you still have a huge variation in, in shades of gray in her hair. And I think it looks amazing. And I cannot wait until I get gray hair because I mean, whenever I see a picture of her or other people with gray locks, I'm just mesmerized. I absolutely love it. From 2008 to 2010, and here we can see the back of her head. Here we do kind of see her parts, not really, but it does look like her hair has been touched up for this photo shoot and she has kind of a fishtail braid going on in the back and you can see her length now. It's going halfway down her back. So her hair is growing longer as well and the shade of gray just keeps changing for a bit more white on the edges and a bit darker in the back. This is an even better view from the back and here we can really see how long they've gotten because if you braid your hair and it's kind of halfway down your back, that means that if you take out the braid, it's even longer. And here, this could be like two full heads of locks because here we can see the braid and then we have a bun as well in the back. So her hair is really either thick or she has a lot of hair because I mean, this is a hairdo that I haven't seen before. I really love it. And it also looks like two heads of locks. If, if I'm honest, it's a lot of hair right here. But then from 2011, I think after that, she cut her locks because if we go to a picture that's shortly after this picture, we can see that she's wearing her hair down with a hat and it doesn't really look that long. And if we go back to this picture, if this is halfway down her back and then this is not even going past her chest, she must have cut her locks. And maybe she did that because it's easier to maintain if it's not as long. Uh, or maybe she just wanted a bit of variety in how to wear her locks. Again, we can see the change in color. If we go back a few pictures, like here, it was truly a shade darker. And then if we look there, it's a different, color of gray again so even when your hair has been locked it still changes in shade and uh, type of gray this portrait we can see the change in her hair color even better because you see all types of shades of gray in her hair and i believe after this she just let her hair grow and uh, it does look like it it's a bit more retwisted at the root because it doesn't look like a huge set of hair anymore it's, the hair looks smaller if you know what i mean i'm not sure how to explain that but uh, this could also be due to when you get older your hair gets a little more fine and a little more uh brittle i'd say not everyone has that some people have a really healthy and thick hair until they pass but most people their hair becomes a bit finer as they become older so that could explain the difference in how her hair looks here. And uh, unfortunately, she passed away earlier this year in August. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting into her books and the movies that were made from her books because clearly she has left a great legacy to US African-American culture. And I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Uh, if you've read one of her books, let me know below and uh, tell me what you thought of them. Because yeah, I, I feel like we are reviewing a lot of people on this channel and many of these people have contributed a lot to the positive representation of locks, but they've also have left a huge cultural legacy that we can learn a lot from. So with that being said, I want to end this video. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.